Is everything ready? We, oui, monsieur. You have your instructions? Is everything all right, Mrs. Ho? Dinner will be ready at 7.30. Boom, boom. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. I don't know if... Yes, indeed, you are expected, Colonel. You are Colonel Mustard, right? No, that's not my name. My name is Colonel... Pardon me, sir. But you may feel well obliged to my employer for the use of an alias. And who are you? I'm Wadsworth, sir. The butler. Yvette, will you attend to the colonel and give him everything he requires? Within reason, that is. Oh, Wadsworth! I was... Do come in, madam. You are expected. Do you know who I am? Only that you want to be known as Mrs. White. Yes, it said so on the letter, but why? Ugh. May I introduce you? Mrs. White, this is Yvette. I see you know each other. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Want a lift? Yes, please. Oh, thanks, I'm late for a dinner date. Me too. Where are you going? Let's see. Hill House off Route 41. Wait a minute, let me look at that. That's where I'm going. I got a letter like this. And this is Mrs. Peacock. How do you do? Hello. Yvette, will you go and check that dinner will be ready as soon as all the guests have arrived? <laughs> Is this the right address to meet Mr. Body? Hmm, you must be Mr. Green. Yes. Shoot! No, not you. Why is the car stopped? It's frightened. What an awful place. Boom, boom. Uh, Professor Plum and Miss Scarlet. I didn't realize you were acquainted. We weren't. May I present Professor Plum and Miss Scarlet? Of course, since you've each been addressed by a pseudonym, you have realized that nobody here is being addressed by their real name. <sighs> ah! Dinner!
Is that a place for you? Oh, indeed, no, sir. I'm merely a humble butler. And what exactly do you do? I buttle, sir. Which means what? The butler is the head of the kitchen and dining room. I keep everything tidy, that's all. Well, what's all this about, butler, this dinner party? Ours is not a reason why. Ours is but to do and die. Die? Merely quoting, sir, from Alfred, Lord Tennyson. Hmm, I prefer Kipling myself. The female of the species is more deadly than the male. You like Kipling, Miss Scarlet? Sure, I'll eat anything. Shark's fin soup, madame. So is this for our host? No, sir, for the seventh guest, Mr. Body. I thought Mr. Body was our host. So who is our host, Mr. Body? <laughs> well, I want to start while it's still hot. Oh, no, shouldn't we wait for the other guest? I will keep it something warm for you. What do you have in mind, dear? Well, someone's got to break the ice and it might as well be me. I mean, I'm used to being a hostess. It's part of my husband's work. And it's always difficult when a group of new friends meet together for the first time to get acquainted. So I'm perfectly prepared to start the ball rolling. I mean, I have absolutely no idea what we're doing here, or what I'm doing here, or what this place is about. But I am determined to enjoy myself, and I'm very intrigued, and... Oh my, the soup's delicious, isn't it? You say you're used to being a hostess as part of your husband's work. Yes, it's an intrigue, an integral part of your life when you're the wife of a... Oh, but then I forgot we're not supposed to say who we really are, though heavens to Betsy, I don't know why. Don't you? I know who you are. Aren't you going to tell us? How do you know who I am? I work in Washington, too. Ah, so you're a politician's wife. Yes, I, I am. Well, come on, then. Who's your husband? So what does your husband do? Nothing. Nothing? Well, he just lies around his back all day. Sounds like hard work to me. Excuse moi. Mmm. This is one of my favorite recipes. I know, madam. So, what do you do in Washington, D.C., Mr. Green? Oh, come on, what do you want to, what do you do? I mean, how are we going to get acquainted if we don't say anything about ourselves? Perhaps he doesn't want to get acquainted with you. Well, I'm sure I don't know, but if I wasn't trying to keep the conversation going, then we would just be sitting here in an embarrassed silence. Are you afraid of silence, Mrs. Peacock? Yes. What? No, why? Oh, it just seems to me that you seem to suffer from what we call pressure of speech. We? Who's we? Are you a shrink? I do know a little bit about psychological medicine, yes. You a doctor? I am, but I don't practice. Practice makes perfect. Huh? I think most men need a little practice, don't you, Mrs. Peacock? So what do you do, Professor? I work for UNO, the United Nations Organization. Another politician? No. I work for a branch of UNO. H... No, WHO, the World Health Organization. Well, what is your area of special concern? Family planning. What about you, Colonel? Are you a real Colonel? I am, sir. You're not going to mention the coincidence that you also live in Washington, D.C. How did you know that? Have we met before? I've certainly seen you before, although you may not have seen me. So, Miss Scarlet, does that mean you live in Washington, too? Sure do. Does anyone here not live in Washington, D.C.? I don't. Yes, but you work for the United Nations. That's a government job, and the rest of us all live in a government town. Anyone here not earn their living from the government in one way or another? Wadsworth, where's our host, and why have we been brought here? Ah, good evening. 
You are eagerly awaited. You lock me in? I'll take the key. Over my dead body, sir. May I take your bag? No, I'll leave it here till I need it. It contains evidence, I presume? Surprises, my friend. That's what it contains. Surprises. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Mr. Body. What are they all doing here? Eating dinner. Do sit down, Mr. Body. Thanks. Nah, you can take that away, honey. Look, I demand to know what's going on. Why have we all been dragged to this horrible place? Well, I believe we all received a letter. My letter says, It will be to your advantage to be present on this date because... A Mr. Body will bring to an end a certain long-standing, confidential, and painful financial liability. It is signed, A Friend. I received a similar letter. So we did. So did we. Didn't we? I also received a letter. No thanks, Yvette. I just ate. How did you know her name? We know each other. Don't we, dear? Forgive my curiosity, Mr. Body, but did your letter say the same thing? No. I see. Can I interest any of you in fruit or dessert? In that case, may I suggest we adjourn to the study for coffee and brandy? At which point, I believe our unknown host will reveal his intentions. Well, there's no one here. Now, everyone... Everyone seated? Alright, we're ready to begin. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am instructed to you... What do you all have in common with each other? Unless you would care to do the honors, Mr. Body. Why me? They know who I am? I don't think so. You've never identified yourself to them, I believe. It's a hoax! I suggest we all leave! I'm sorry, sir! You cannot leave this house! Oh no! Who's gonna stop me? There's no way out! All the windows have bars, and all the doors are locked! This is an outrage! You can't just hold us prisoner! Yes, you must be proud. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, please return to the study. Everything will be explained. You too, Mr. Body. Other way! Hey, you can't get out that way. Why not? It's only glass. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you all have one thing in common. You're all being blackmailed. For some considerable time, all of you have been paying what you can afford, and in some cases, more than you can afford. To someone who threatens to expose you, and none of you know who's blackmailing you, do you? Oh, please, I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. I mean, nobody could blackmail me. My life's an open book. I've never done anything wrong. Anybody else wish to deny it? Very well. As everyone here is in the same boat, there's no harm in my revealing some details. And my instructions are to do so. Thank you, Yvette.
Don't you think you might spare us this humiliation? I'm sorry. Professor Plum, you are once a professor of psychiatry, specializing in helping paranoid and homicidal lunatics suffering from delusions of grandeur. Yes, but now I work for the United Nations. So your work has not changed, but you don't practice medicine at the UN. His license to practice has been lifted, correct? Oh, why? What did he do? You know what doctors aren't allowed to do with their lady patients. Yeah? Well, he did. <laughs> oh, how disgusting. Are you making moral judgments, Mrs. Peacock? How then do you justify taking bribes in return for delivering your husband, Senator Peacock's vote, to certain lobbyists? My husband is a paid consultant. There is nothing wrong with that. Not if it's publicly declared, perhaps, but if the payment is delivered by slipping used greenbacks in plain envelopes under the door of the men's room. How would you describe the transaction? I'd say it stinks. Well, how would you know? When were you in that men's room? So it's true. No, it's a vicious lie! I'm sure we're all glad to hear that. But you've been playing blackmail for over a year now to keep that story out of the papers. Well, I'm willing to believe you. I, too, am being blackmailed for something I didn't, too. Me, too. And me. Not me. You're not being blackmailed? Oh, I'm being blackmailed, all right. But I did what I'm being blackmailed for. What did you do? Well, to be perfectly frank, I run a specialized hotel and a telephone service which provides gentlemen with the company of a young lady for a short while. Oh, yeah? What's the phone number? So how did you know Colonel Mustard works in Washington? Is he one of your clients? Certainly not. I was asking Miss Scarlet. Will you tell them it's not true? It's not true. Is it true? No, it's not true. Ah, so it is true. A double negative. Double negative? You mean you have photographs? That sounds like a confession to me. In fact, the double negative has led to proof positive. I'm afraid you gave yourself away. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? You don't need any help from me, sir. That's right. But seriously, I don't see what's so terrible about Colonel Mustard visiting a house of ill fame. Most soldiers do, don't they? Oh, please! But he holds a sensitive security post in the Pentagon. And Colonel, you drive a very expensive car for someone who lives on a Colonel's pay. I don't! I came into money for during the war when I lost my mommy and daddy. Mrs. White, you've been paying our friend the blackmailer ever since your husband died under, shall we say, mysterious circumstances. <laughs> Why is that so funny? I see, that's why he was laying on his back. In his coffin. I didn't kill him. Then why are you paying the blackmailer? I don't want a scandal, do I? We had a very humiliating public confrontation. He was deranged, lunatic. He didn't actually seem to like me very much. He, th he had threatened to kill me in public. Why would he kill you in public? I think she said that he threatened in public to kill her. Oh. And that was his final word on the matter? Being killed is pretty final, wouldn't you say? And yet he was the one who died, not you, Mrs. White. Not you. What did he do for a living? He was a scientist. Nuclear physics. What was he like? He was always a rather stupidly optimistic man. I mean, I'm afraid it came to a great shock to him when he died. But he was found dead at home. His head had been cut off and so had his... You know. I had been out all evening at the movies. Do you miss him? Well, it's a matter of life after death. Now that he's dead, I have a life. But he was your second husband. Your first husband also disappeared. But that was his job. He was an illusionist. But he never reappeared. He wasn't a very good illusionist. <clears throat> I have something to say. I'm not going to wait for Wadsworth to here to unmask me. I work for the State Department. And I'm a homosexual. <gasps> I feel no personal shame or guilt about this, but I must keep it a secret or I'll lose my job on security grounds. Thank you. Well, that just leaves Mr. Body. What's your little secret? His secret? Oh, hadn't you guessed? He's the one who's blackmailing you all. <gasps> you fiend! <clears throat> Put him up, uh, gentlemen. If you can't fight fairly, don't fight at all. Calls <clears throat> me a fiend. <clears throat> are coming. Listen, blackmail depends on secrecy. You've all admitted how he's been able to blackmail you. 
All you have to do is tell the police you'll be convicted and your troubles will be over. <laughs> Not so easy. You'll never tell the police. That I shall. I have evidence in my possession. And this conversation is being tape recorded. Point of order, tape court recordings are not admissible evidence. Ladies and gentlemen, the police will be here in about 45 minutes. Tell them the truth and Mr. Body will be behind bars. Where are you going this time? I think I can help them change their minds. Can I just get my little bag from the hall? You can guess what's in here, eh? Evidence against us, no doubt. <laughs> we didn't know we were meeting you tonight. Did you know you were meeting us? Oh, yes. What were you told precisely? Merely that you were all meeting to discuss our little financial agreements. And if I did not appear, Wadsworth would be informing the police about it all. Naturally, I could hardly resist putting in an appearance. Excuse me? Open them. Why not? I enjoy getting presents from strange men. A candlestick? What's this for? In your hands, you each have a lethal weapon. If you denounce me to the police, you will also be exposed and humiliated. I will see to that in court. But if one of you kills Wadsworth now, no one but the seven of us will ever know. He has the key to the French door, which he said would only be opened over his dead body. I suggest we take him up on that offer. The only way to avoid finding yourselves on the front pages is for one of you to kill Wadsworth. Now. <laughs> it's not Wadsworth. Stand back! Give him out! He did. Who had the gun? I did. Then you shot him. I didn't. Well, you had the gun. If you didn't shoot him, who did? <clears throat> Nobody. Look, there's no gunshot wound. Somebody tried to grab the gun from me in the dark, and the gun went off. Look, the ball broke that face on the mantle. <laughs> He's absolutely right. Look, there's a bullet hole in the wall. See that? How did he die? I don't know. I'm not a farcenic expert. Well, one of us must have killed him. Well, I didn't do it. Oh, I need a drink. Maybe it was poisoned. Mrs. Beaker. Ah! 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 
I had to stop her from screaming. Was the brandy poisoned? I don't know. Looks like we'll never know. Unless... Unless she dies too. It's locked! Open up! It must be the murderer! Why would he scream? You must have a victim in there! Oh no, he fights! Ah, you're alive! No thanks to you! What do you mean? You don't be able to murder, you idiot! So the murderer in his in this room. May we? But... But where? Where? Here! We're all looking at him, or er, uh, is what Mrs. White said in the study. One of you is a killer. How did you know we said that? I was listening. But why were you screaming in here all by yourself? Because I am frightened. I also drink, me too, I also drink the gognac. Mon Dieu, I can't stay in here by myself. Come back to the study with us. With the murderer? There is safety in numbers, my dear. Is there no indication of how he died? No! This is terrible, it's absolutely intended! It's terrible, it's not what I intended! Not what you intended! So you're not the butler? I'm not THE butler, but I am A butler. In fact, I was HIS butler. So if he told you to invite us all to this house, why do you arrive, arrive, arrive late? I invited you. In fact, I wrote the letters, it was all my idea. Wait a minute, I, I don't understand. Why did you invite us here to meet your late employer? Were you ass assisting him to blackmail us? Certainly not! I think you'd better explain. Please sit down, everyone. When I said that I was Mr. Body's butler, this was both true and misleading. I was once his butler. But it was not his untimely death this evening that my employ brought my employment with him to an end. When did it come to an end? When my wife decided to end her life. She too was being blackmailed by this odious man who now lies dead before us. He hated my wife for the same reason that he hated all of you. He believed that you were all thoroughly un-American. For some reason, he felt that it was inappropriate for a senator to have a corrupt wife. For a doctor to take advantage of his patients. For a wife to emasculate her husband. And so forth. But this is ridiculous. If he was such a patriotic American, why didn't he just report us to the authorities? He decided to put his information to good use and make a little money out of it. What could be more American than that? What was your role in all this? I was a victim too. At least my wife was. She had friends who were socialists. <gasps> well, we all make mistakes. Mr. Body threatened to give my wife's name to the House Un American Activities Committee unless she named them. She refused. And so he blackmailed her. We had no money and the place of his sil and the price of his silence was that we worked for him for nothing. We were slaves. Well, to make a long story short, too late. The suicide of my wife preyed on my mind and created a sense of injustice in me. I resolved to put Mr. Body behind bars. It seemed to be the best way to do it, and to give and to free all of you from the same burden of blackmail was to get everyone face to face, confront Mr. Body with his crimes, and then. Turn him over to the police. So everything is explained. Nothing's explained. We still don't know who killed him. Well, the point is, we got to find out in the next 39 minutes before the police arrive. Gosh, we can't have them come here now, but how can we possibly find out which one of you did it? What do you mean, which one of you did it? Well, I didn't do it. Well, one of us did. We all had the opportunity. We all had a motive. Great. Let's all, we'll all go to the chair. Maybe it wasn't one of us. Well, who else could it have been? Who else is in the house? Only the cook. Is the cook? The cook!
Hmm. Well, she's not here. I didn't do it! Someone help me, please! Someone help me, please! Don't touch it! That's evidence. Not for us. We have to find out who did this. We can't take fingerprints. I think you better explain yourself, Wadsworth. Me? Why me? Who would want to kill the cook? Dinner wasn't that bad. How can you make jokes at a time like this? It's my defense mechanism. Some defense? If I was the killer, I'd kill you next. Huh? I said if. If. Hey, come on. There is only one admitted killer here, and it's certainly not me. It is her. I've admitted nothing. Well, you paid the blackmail. How many husbands have you had? Mine or other women's? Yours. Five. Five? Yes, just the five. Husbands should be like Kleenex, soft, strong, and disposable. You lure men to their deaths like a spider with flies. Flies are where men are most vulnerable. Right. Well, if it wasn't you, then who was it? Who had the dagger, anyway? It was you, Mrs. Peacock, wasn't it? Yes, but I put it down. Where? In the study. When? I don't know. Before I fainted, after I fainted, I don't know. But any one of you could have picked it up. Mm. Look, I suggest we take the cook's body into the study. Why? I'm the butler. I like to keep the kitchen tidy. Look! What? The body's gone. What are you all staring at? Uh, nothing. Thing. Well, who's there? Nobody. Nobody. No body. That's what we mean. Mr. Body's body. It's gone. <sighs> Maybe he wasn't dead. He was. We should have made sure. How? By cutting his head off, I suppose. That wasn't called for. Where is he? Better look for him. Well, he couldn't have been dead. <laughs> he was. At least I thought he was, but... What difference does it make? It makes quite a difference to him. Maybe there is life after death. Life after death is as improbable as sex after marriage. Maybe Mr. Body killed the cook. Yes! How? Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to, um, is there a little girl's room? Oui, oui, madame. No, uh, I just want to powder my nose. Thank you. What's this, Wadsworth? I'm afraid those are the negatives to which Colonel Muster earlier referred. Oh my gosh, are you planning to blackmail him, Wadsworth? Certainly not! I've obtained them for the Colonel. And I was going to give them back as soon as Mr. Body was unmasked. Very pretty. Would you like to see these, event? They might shock you. No, miss, see, I'm a lady. Oh, how do you know what kind of pictures they are if you're such a lady? What sort of pictures are they? They are my pictures, and i like them back, please. No, I'm afraid there's something in there that concerns me, too. Let me see. Oh, my. Nobody can get into that position. Sure they can. <laughs> Let me show you. Get off me!
This one. It's a tiger! It's a tiger! Oh, he's dead. Mr. Body, dead. Again? Oh, gosh. I think I'm gonna. F she's gonna faint. Uh, somebody catch her. I'll catch her. Follow my arms. Uh, sorry. You got blood on your hands. I gotta do it. He's got no injuries. Well, he's certainly dead now. Why would anyone want to kill him twice? It seems so unnecessary. It's what we call overkill. It's what we call psychotic. Unless he wasn't dead before. What's the difference? That's exactly what we're trying to find out. We're trying to find out who killed him and where and with what. There's no need to shout. I'm not shouting. All right, I am. I'm shouting, I'm shouting, I'm shout. Okay, later, ladies first. Careful, we don't want to, we don't, careful, we don't want to get blood on the sofa. How do we do this? The dagger will go further to a back. Tip it forward over the arm. Now, Mr. Body. <clears throat> now who who had access to the candlestick? It was given to you. Yeah, but I dropped it on the table. Anyone could have picked it up. You, him. Look, we still have all these weapons. The gun, the rope, the wrench, the lead pipe. We'll put them all in this cupboard and lock it. There's a homicidal maniac about. What are you doing with the key? Putting it in my pocket. Why? Well, to keep it safe. Safe, obviously. <laughs> but that means you can open it whenever you want. But it also means you can't. But what if you're the murderer? I'm not. But what if you are? Well, it's got to be put somewhere. If I've got it, I know I'm safe. We don't know that we are. I have an idea. We'll throw it away. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can we help? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb the whole household, but a car broke down out here. I was just wondering if I could use your phone. Just a moment, please. Very well, sir. Would you care to come in? Well, where is it? What? The body? No, the phone. What body? Well, there's nobody. There's nobody Nobody in the study. No! Well, I think there's a phone in the lounge. Thank you. When you finished your call, perhaps you'd be good enough to wait here. Certainly.
<gasps> ah! Where's the key? In my pocket. Not that key. The key to the cupboard with the weapons. You still wish me to throw it away? Yes! Well, what now? Oh, Wadsworth, let me out. No. Why not? We've got to know who did it. We're all in this together now. <sighs> if you leave, I'll say that you killed them both. <sighs> oh, Wadsworth. I'll make you sorry if you ever started this. One day, we're well alone together. Mrs. White! No man in his right mind would be alone together with you. Well, I could use a drink. Just checking. Is everything all right? <laughs> yep. Two corpses. Everything's fine. All right. Look, pay attention, everyone. Wadsworth, am I right in thinking there is nobody else in this house? Hmm, no. Then there is someone else in this house. No, sorry, I have said no meaning yes. No meaning yes? Look, I want a straight answer. Is there someone else or isn't there? Yes or no? No. No, there is or no, there isn't. Yes. <gasps> Please! Don't you think we should get that man out of the house before he finds out what's going on here? Yeah. How can we throw him out in this weather? If we let him stay in the house, he may get suspicious. If we throw him out, he'll get even more suspicious. If I were him, I'd be suspicious already. Oh, that guy doesn't matter. Just let him stay. Locked up for another half an hour. The police will be here by then, and there are two dead bodies in the study. Shh. Well, there's still some confusion as to whether or not there's anybody else in this house. I told you, sir, there wasn't. No confusion or no one else in the house either. Or both. Just give me a straight answer. Certainly. What was the question? Is there anyone else in the house? No! It's what he says. But how does he know? I suggest we handle this in proper military fashion. We split up and search the house. Split up? Yes. We have very little time left, so we'll split up into pairs. Pairs? Yes. Wait a minute. Suppose that one of us is the murderer. If we split up into pairs, whichever one is left with the killer might get killed. Then we would have discovered who the murderer is. But the other half of the pair would be dead. This is war, Peacock. Casualties are inevitable. You cannot without breaking eggs. Every cook will tell you that. But look what happened to the cook. Colonel, are you willing to take that chance? What choice have we? None. I suppose you're right. Montico, it is very dark upstairs, and I am afraid of the dark. Will anyone go with me? I will, I will. Oh, no thank you. I suggest we all draw lots for partners. Ready? Two shortest together, next two shortest together. Agreed. It's you and me, honey bunch. Ugh. 
Cellar. I'm a little nervous. I'm in this big house. And I belong in the lounge. The funny thing is, there's a whole group of people having some sort of party. One of them is my old boss from. <laughs> Looks like a secret passage. Should we see where it leads? Why not? I'll go first. I've had a good life. Oh, gosh. Huh? The door's locked. I know. I'm gonna lock it. Where's the key? The key is gone. Never mind about the key. Unlock the door. I can't unlock the door without the key. Let us in. Let us in. Let us out! That's no good! Stay back! There's no alternative. I'm just going to have to break it down. I have it! Will you shut up? What? They're shooting at us. I've been shot. I've been shot. I've been shot. Go my now. The door is open. Why are you shooting that thing at us? To get you out. You know, you could have killed us. I could have been killed. I can't take any more scares. Look! Which one of you did it? We found him, together. How did you get in? There's a secret passage in the conservatory. Is that the same gun? From the cupboard? 
But it was locked. No, it was un it was unlocked. Unlocked. But yes, see for yourself. How'd you know it was unlocked? How did you know you could get at the gun? I didn't. I think I would break it open, but it was open already. Likely story. Maybe they'll just go away. I'm going to open it. Why? I have no other I didn't do it. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Yes. I found an abandoned car down near the gates of this house. Did the driver come in here for help by any chance? Well, actually, yes. No! There seems to be some kind of disagreement. No. Yes. Uh, can I come in and use your phone? Yeah, of course, sir. You may use the one in the, um... You can, uh, you can use the one in the st uh, No. Would you be kind enough to wait in the, uh, the library? Sure. Do I know you from some place? You all seem to be very anxious about something. It's the chandelier. It fell down, almost killed us. Would you like to come this way, sir? Frightfully drafty, these old houses. Please help yourself to a drink if you'd like. Not the cognac. Just in case. Just in case of what? Oh, very well for you to say that now. I said it then. Oh, shut up. Let's clean this up. <laughs> Hello? Maybe the cop answered it. And who should I say is calling? Uh, would you hold on, please? <clears throat> let me out of here! Let me out of here! I'll book you for false arrest, the wrongful imprisonment, and obstructing an officer in the course of his duty, and murder! What do you mean, murder? I just said it's it open the door. What's going on around here? Why would you lock me in? And why are you receiving phone calls from J. Edgar Hoover? J. Edgar Hoover? That's right, the head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Why is J. Edgar Hoover on your phone? I don't know. He's on everybody else's, so why shouldn't he be on mine? What's going on here? 
We're having a, uh, a party. <laughs> Mind if I look around? Sure, you can show them around, Mr. Green. Me, yes. You, you can show them the dining room, the kitchen, the ballroom. <laughs> fine, fine. Officer, uh, come with me. I'll show you around the dining room or the kitchen or the ballroom. So, this is a dining room. No kidding! What's going on in those two rooms? Uh, which two rooms? Those two rooms. Oh, those two rooms? Yes. Officer, I don't think you should go in there. Why not? Uh, because it's... All too shocking. <clears throat> it's not all that shocking. These folks are just having a good time. This should be convincing. Excuse me. This man is drunk. Dead drunk. Dead right. You're not gonna drive home, are you? He won't be driving home. I promise you that. Yeah. Someone will give him a lift, huh? Oh, we'll get... We'll get him a car. A long black car. A limousine! <laughs> Officer! You're too late. I've seen it all. You have? I can explain everything. You don't have to. I don't? Don't worry, there's nothing illegal about any of this. Are you sure? Of course, this is America. I see. <laughs> it's a free country. Don't you know that? I didn't know it was that free. May I use your phone now? Certainly. Why'd you lock him in again? We haven't finished searching the house yet. Well, we're running out of time. Only 15 minutes before the police come. The police already came. Shut up. Let's get on with it. Monsieur? Oh! Huh? Look, I can't believe it. I wonder where this one goes. Let's try the ballroom again. <sighs> what happened to the power? I can't see! The door. Did anyone recognize you? They must have. And not just my face. 
you know, every inch of my body. They're not the only ones. It's you. Hello? Hello? There's something funny going on here. I don't know what it is. No, I'm not on duty, but I have a feeling that I'm in danger. You know that big, ugly house on top? Hello? Hello? Are you there? Da, 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 da. I am your singing telegram. Who murders? <clears throat> Neither of them shot. I thought I heard a gun. I did, so did I. I thought I heard the front door slam. Oh, the murderer must have run out. Three murders. Six all together. This is getting serious. <laughs> no gun. Yvette dropped it here. Very well. I know who did it. You do? And furthermore, I'm going to tell you how it is all done. Follow me. In order to help you understand what happened, I shall need to take you through the events of the evening step by step. At the start of the evening, Yvette was here by herself, waiting to offer you all a glass of champagne. I was in the hall. I know. Because I was there. Then, I hurried across to the kitchen. And the cook was in here, alive, sharpening knives, preparing dinner, and then... And the doorbell rang, and it was you. Yes. I asked you for your coat, and I recognized you as Colonel Mustard, and I prevented you from telling your real name because I didn't want any of you to use any name other than your pseudonym. And I introduced myself to you as a butler, and I ran across the hall to the library. And then Yvette met you, and smiled, and... Board your drink. The doorbell rang, and it was Mrs. White, looking pale and tragic. And I took her coat and made off. And I introduced Colonel Mustard. Hello, hello. And I noticed that Mrs. White and Yvette flinched. And then there was a rumble of thunder, uh, and a crash of lightning. And to make a long story short, too late. One by one, all of you arrived. And the gong was struck by the cook. <sighs> we went into the dining room. Miss Peacock got sat here. Professor Plum sat here. Mrs. White here. Mr. Green. Miss Scarlet. Colonel Mustard. This chair was vacant.
Anyway, we all revealed, we all received a letter. You had a letter, and you had a letter, and you had a letter. Get on with it! The point is, blackmail. But all this came out after dinner, in the state. You're right. Mr. <clears throat> uh, Green stood here, Ms. Peacock not here, Scarlet here, Prince Blum here, Colonel Mustard, Mrs. White. Go! I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Mr. Barney went to get his surprise back just from the hall. You open your presents. Mr. Barney switched out the lights. <gasps> Mr. Barney lay on the floor, apparently dead. He was dead. I examined him. Then why was he bashed on the head a few minutes later with a candlestick if he was dead already? All right, I made a mistake. Right, but if so, why was Mr. Barney pretending to be dead? It could only be because he realized his scheme had misfired and the gunshot was intended to kill him, not me. Look, the bullet grazed his ear. Clearly, his best way of escaping death was to pretend to be dead already. So whoever grabbed the gun from me in the dark was trying to kill him. But remember what happened next. Mrs. Peacock took a Greek drink. And he was like, maybe it's poison. She screams. Ah, 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 ah. Scream. Ah, ah. <laughs> I had to stop her from screaming. And uh, more screaming. They went! The bedroom! We all rushed out! <laughs> but one of us wasn't here. Now. No. No. Maybe one of us was murdering the cook, who wasn't here with us. Do you know? I do. While we stood here, trying to stop Yvette from panicking, one of us could have stayed in the study, picked up the dagger, ran down the hall, and stabbed the cook. Uh, how could he risk it? You might have seen him running back. Not if they used the secret passage. And the murderer ran back down the secret passage into the study. Is that where it comes out? Yes, look! How do you know? This house belongs to a friend of mine. I've known all along. So you can be the murderer. Don't be ridiculous. If I was the murderer, why would I reveal to you how I did it? Well, who else know about the secret passage? We found it, Colonel Mustard and me. You found it. You could have known about it all the time. But I didn't. Well, why should we believe you? Because she was with us all in the billiard room doorway while Yvette was screaming. Don't you remember? What I don't understand is, why was the cook murdered? She had nothing to do with Mr. Body. Of course she did. I gathered you all here together because you were all implicated in Mr. Body's dastardly blackmail. Did none of you deduce that the others were involved too? What others? The cook. And Yvette. No. Oh, that's how he got all his information. Before he could blackmail anyone, Mr. Body had to discover their guilty secret. The cook and Yvette were his accomplices. I see. So, whoever knew that the cook was involved, killed her? Yes. I know because I was Mr. Body's butler that the cook had worked for one of you. Who was it? You recognized the vent, didn't you? Don't deny it. What do you mean, don't deny it? I'm not denying anything. Another denial! All right, it's true. I knew Yvette. My husband had an affair with her, but I didn't care. I wasn't jealous. You knew Yvette too, didn't you? Yes, she worked for me. Oh, and you also knew her, sir. We've already established that you are one of Miss Scarlet's clients. That's why you were so desperate to get your hands on those negatives. Photographs of you and Yvette in flagrant delicto, remember? 
Mr. Barty threatened to send those pictures to my dear old mother. The shock would have killed her. Ha! <laughs> that would have been quite an achievement since you told us about that she's dead already. So he had the motive. You all had a motive. But where and when was Mr. Barty killed? Don't you see? Look, we came back to the study with the vet. Mr. Barty was on the floor pretending to be dead. But one of us noticed he's alive, so I explained that I was Mr. Barty's butler and I'd invited you here. And we realized there was only one other person in the house. The cook! Well, where is he? <laughs> now, now she was dead. We laid her down with our backs to the freezer. And one of us slipped through that same secret passage again. Of course, back to the study. Murder was in the secret passage. Meanwhile, Mr. Body had been on the floor. He had jumped up. The murderer came out of the secret panel, picked up the candlestick. This boy followed us out of the study, into the hall, looking for an escape. The murderer crept up behind him and killed him. Ow! Will you stop that? No! Then he threw him in the toilet. Ah! And nonchalantly rejoined us beside the cook's body in the kitchen. It took less than half a minute. Who was it there the entire time in the kitchen? Whoever it was was the murderer. We put the weapons in the cupboard, locked it, and went to the front door. We throw away the key. The boat wrist. I didn't throw the key away. I put it in my pocket. And someone could have taken it out of my pocket and substituted another. We were all in a huddle. Any one of us could have done that. Precisely. Wait a minute. Colonel Mustard's the top secret Pentagon job. Mrs. White's husband is a nuclear physicist. And Miss Yvette is a link between them. What is your top secret job, Colonel? I can tell you. He's working on the secret of the next fusion bomb. <gasps> How did you know that? Can you keep a secret? Yes. So can I. Is this a plot between them, Wadsworth, or did Colonel Mustard do it alone? We shall see. Let's look at the other murders. Yes, bad luck has at that motorist arrived at that moment. It wasn't luck. I invited him. You did? Of course. It's obvious. Everyone here tonight was either Mr. Body's victim or accomplice. Everyone who has died gave him vital information about one of you. I got them here so they'd give evidence against him and force him to confess. Oh yeah? What about the, that motorist? What kind of information did he have? He was my driver during the war. And what was he holding over you? He knew that I was a war profiteer. I stole essential Air Force radio parts and I sold them on the black market. That is how I made all my money. But that does not make me a murderer. Well, a lot of our airmen died because their radios didn't work. Was the policeman working for Mr. Body, too? The cop was from Washington. He was on my payroll. I bribed him once a week so I could carry on with business. Mr. Body found out somehow. Oh my gosh, please! And the singing telegram girl? She was my patient once. I had an affair with her. That's how I lost my license. Mr. Body found that out, too. Well, let's put her in the study with the others. <sighs> 
So now you know why they died. Whoever killed Mr. Body also wanted his accomplices dead. How did the murderer know about them all? I mean, I admit I guessed that this young singer informed me to Mr. Body. But I didn't know anything about any of you until this evening. First, the murderer needed to get the weapons. He stole the key from my pocket. And then we all followed Colonel Mustard's suggestion that we split up and search the house. That's right, it was Colonel Mustard's suggestion. And one of us got away from his or her partner and hurried to the study. On the desk was the envelope from Mr. Body. It contained photographs and letters. The evidence of Mr. Body's network of informants. Where is the envelope now? Gone. Destroyed. Perhaps in the fire. The only possible place. Uh -huh. Aha! Then, having found out the whole story, the murderer went to the cupboard, unlocked it with the key, took out the wrench. Then we found the secret passage from the conservatory to the lounge, where we found the motorist dead. That's right, we couldn't get in, so Yvette ran to the open cupboard, shot the door open, bang! And then, the doorbell rang. Dum, dum. Oh, whoever it is, they gotta go away or they'll be killed! Good evening. Have you ever given any thought to the kingdom of heaven? What? Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You ain't just whistling Dixie. Armageddon is upon us. I got news for you. It's already here. Go away. But your souls are in danger. Our lives are in danger, you beatnik. The cop arrived next. We locked him in the library. We forgot the cupboard with the weapons, and that was now unlocked. Then we split up again, and the murderer switched off the electricity. Oh, not again! Sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you all. You're a bit late for that. I hate it when he does that. Then there were three more murders. Oh, dang! None of us killed Mr. Body or the cook. And who did? The one person who wasn't with us. Yvette. Yvette? She was in the billiard room listening to our conversation. She heard the gunshot. She thought he was dead. And while we all examined the bullet hole, she crept to the study, picked up the dagger, ran to the kitchen, and stabbed the cook. We didn't hear the cook scream because Mrs. Peacock was screaming about the poison brandy. Then, Yvette returned to the billiard room. She screamed, and we all ran to her. When did she kill Mr. Body? When I said. We all ran to the kitchen to see the cook. Yvette hid in the study to check that Mr. Body was dead. He got up and followed them down the hall. So she hit him on the head with the candlestick and dragged him to the toilet. Why? To create confusion. It worked. Why did she do it? Was it because she was acting under orders from the person who later killed her? Uh, who? Was it one of her clients? Or was it a jealous wife? Or an adulterous doctor? No. It was her employer, Miss Scarlet. That's a lie, is it? You used her the way you always used her. You killed the murderess when we split up to search the house. How could I have known about the secret passage? Easy. Yvette told you. So when we split up again, you switched off the electricity. It was easy for you here on the ground floor. Then, in the dark, you got the lead pipe and the rope, strangled Yvette, ran to the library, killed the cop, picked up the gun where Yvette dropped it, opened the front door, recognized the singing telegram from her photograph, and shot her. You've no proof. The gun is missing. Gentlemen, turn out your pockets. Ladies, empty your purses. Whoever has the gun is the murderer. Brilliantly worked out, Wadsworth. I congratulate you. Oh.
Me too. Shut up! Now there's one thing I don't understand. One thing! Why did you do it? Half of Washington knows what kind of business you run. You were in no real danger. The whole town... It would be implicated if you were exposed. I don't think they know my real business. My business is secrets. Yvette found them out for me. The secrets of Senator Peacock's defense committee, of Colonel Mustard's fusion bob, Professor Plum's UN contacts, and the work of your husband, the nuclear physicist. So it is political. You're a communist. No, Mr. Green. Communism is just a red herring. Like all members of the oldest profession, I am a capitalist, and I'm going to sell my secrets, your secrets, to the highest bidder. Or if we don't cooperate, oh, you will, or I'll expose you. We could expose you, six murders? I hardly think it will hit your reputation at the UN, Professor Plum. If it's revealed that you have been implicated, not only in adultery with one of her patients, but in her death, and the deaths of five other people, you don't know what kind of people they have at the UN, I might go up in their estimation. It's no good blackmailing me, madam. I have no more money. I know, sweetie pie, but you can pay me in government information. All of you. Except you, Wadsworth. You as a mere butler has no access to government secrets. So, I believe your time has come. Not so fast, Scarlet. I do have a secret or two. Oh yeah, such as the game's up. There are no more bullets left in that gun. Oh, come on. You don't think we're going to fall for that old trick? It's not a trick. There was one shot for Mr. Barney in the study, two for the chandelier, two for the lounge door, and one for the singing telegram. That's not six. One plus two plus two plus one. Ah, there was only one shot at the chandelier, so it'll be one plus two plus one plus one. Even if you are right, it'll be one plus one plus two plus one. Not one plus two plus one plus one. Okay, fine. One plus two plus one. Shut up! Point is, there is only one bullet left in this gun, and guess who's going to get it? I'm only a guest. Where's the chief? <clears throat> ah, Wadsworth, well done. I did warn you, my dear. Mr. Hoover is an expert on Armageddon. Oh, Wadsworth. Don't hate me for trying to shoot you. Frankly, Scarlet, I didn't care. Because as I was trying to tell you, there are no bullets left in this gun. See? In the dark, the murderer ran across the hall to the study, picked up the rope and the lead pipe, ran to the billiard room, strangled Yvette, ran to the library, killed the cop up with a lead pipe. Then coming out of the library, the doorbell rang. It was a singing telegram. The murderer picked up the gun where Yvette dropped it, ran to the door, opened it, recognized the girl from a picture, and shot her, and ran back to the cellar. <gasps> the cellar! Yes, but Colonel Mustard wasn't in the cellar. No, but you were. Uh... So, you murdered them all. You were the person who m was missing when the cook and Mr. Barney were murdered. And the cook used to be your cook. Don't you remember your fatal mistake? You told us at dinner that you were eating one of your favorite recipes, and monkey's brains, though popular in Cantonese cuisine, are not often to be found in Washington, D.C. Is that what we ate? Why would I have murdered all the others? Obviously, in case Mr. Body had told them about you. So it all has nothing to do with the disappearing nuclear physicist and Colonel Mustard's work on the new fusion bomb. No. 
Communism was just a red herring. Mrs. Peacock did it all. There's no proof. Well, the gun is missing. Gentlemen, turn out your pockets. Ladies, empty your purses. Whoever has the gun is the murderer. Very well, but what do you propose to do about it? Nothing. N nothing. Nothing at all. I don't approve of murder, but it seems to me that you've done the world a service by ridding it of an appalling blackmailer and his disgusting informers. But the police will be here any minute. What happens then? Why should the police come? Nobody's called them. You mean... That's right. Now, I suggest we stack the bodies in the cellar, lock it, leave quietly one at a time, and pretend that none of this ever happened. Great idea. I'll leave first. If you don't mind. Be my guest. In fact, I think you all owe... We all owe you a vote of thanks. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. For she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow. <clears throat> I told you I didn't do it. <clears throat> what if the authorities find out what happened? The FBI will take care of that. You mean my phone call from Mr. Hoover? I work for him, of course. How else could I have known everything about you all? There's still one thing I don't understand. One thing? Who is Mrs. Peacock taking bribes from? A foreign power. Her husband, the senator, has influence over defense contracts. Is there going to be a cover-up? Isn't that in the public interest? What could be gained by exposure? But is the FBI in the habit of cleaning up after multiple murder? Yes. Why do you think it's run by a man called Hoover? <clears throat> oh, Mrs. Peacock! How did you know my name? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, take him away. Oh, get your kids off me! I'm a senator's wife! Wadsworth, we got her. You see, like the Mounties, we always get our man. Mrs. Peacock was a man? <laughs> Would anyone care for uh, fruit or dessert? Let's consider each murder one by one. Professor Plob, you knew that Mr. Body was still alive. Even a psychiatrist can tell the difference between patients who are alive and dead. You fired the gun at him in the dark and missed, so you pretended he was dead. That's how you were able to kill him later, unobserved. That's right! He was the missing person in the kitchen after we found the cook dead. But he was with us in the billard room when we found a fed screaming. If that's when the cook was murdered, how'd he do it? I didn't! You don't expect us to believe that, do you? I expect you to believe it. You killed the cook. She used to be your cook, and she informed you on Mr. Body. You made one fatal mistake. Sitting at your spot at dinner, Mrs. Peacock told us she was eating one of her favorite recipes. And monkey's brains, though popular in Cantonese cuisine, are not often to be found in Washington, D.C. Colonel Mustard, when we saw the murderers at the front door... You took the key to the weapons cupboard out of my pocket. Then you suggested that we all split up. You separated from Miss Scarlet, crossed the hall, opened the cupboard, took the wrench, ran to the conservatory, entered the lounge through the secret passage, killed the murderers with a blow on the head. Like that! <sighs> this is incredible. Not so incredible as what happened next. After we all split up again... I went upstairs with you. Yes, you, Mrs. White. And while I was in the master bedroom, you hurried downstairs and turned off the electricity. You got the rope from the open cupboard and throttled Yvette. You were jealous that your husband was stooping Yvette. That's why you killed him, too. Yes. I did it. I killed Yvette. I hated her so much. It, 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 oh, flame, flame. Flames on the side of my face. Breathing. <laughs> Heaving breaths. Heaving. 
While you were in the billiard room, Miss Scarlet seized the opportunity and under cover of darkness, got to the library where she hit the cop for whom she had been bribing on the head with the lead pipe. True or false? True. Who are you, Perry Mason? Well, it must have been Mr. Green who shot the singing telegram. I didn't do it. Well, there's nobody else left, but I didn't do it. The gun is missing. Whoever had the gun shot the girl. I shot her. You? So it was you. I was going to expose you. I know. So I chose to expose myself. Please, there are ladies present. You thought Mr. Body was dead, but why? None of you even met him until tonight. You are Mr. Body! <laughs> wait a Wait a minute. Who did I kill? My butler. Ah, shucks. It, he was expendable, like all of you. I'm grateful to you all for disposing of my network of spies and informers. Saved me a lot of trouble. Now there's no evidence against me. This all has nothing to do with my disappearing nuclear physicist husband or Colonel Mustard's work with the new top secret fusion bomb. No, communism is just a red herring. But the police will be here any minute. You'll never get away with this, any of you. Why should the police come? Nobody's called them. Do you mean... Oh, no, of course! So why shouldn't we get away with it? We'll stack the bodies in the cellar, lock it, leave quietly, one at a time, and forget that any of this ever happened. And you'll just go blackmailing us all. Of course. Why not? Well, I'll tell you why not. <laughs> Very good, Green. You a cop? No. I'm a plant. A plant? I thought men like you were usually called a fruit. Very funny. FBI, that phone call from J. Edgar Hoover was for me. I told you I didn't do it. <sighs> All right. Who done it? Hey, this is Mrs. Pink, Scarlet, White. They all did it. Oh, and if you're wondering who killed Mr. Body, I did. In the hall with a revolver. All right, take him away, Chief. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. <laughs>